Welcome back to Street Signs. Well, shifting our focus now to India, where corporate earnings there have been mixed so far as supply disruptions and rising inflation do hurt a number of bottom lines. Indian stock markets also struggling with a broader sell-off with the Nifty and the Sensex, both falling over 6% so far this year. Well, farmer major Lupin came out with this report card and its losses widened to over 5 billion rupees in the March quarter. The company blaming rising raw material costs and slumping demand for its COVID drugs for the weak numbers. Well, let's bring in Vanita Gupta, who is the CEO of Lupin, joining us from Mumbai for this CBC exclusive interview. Thank you very much for joining us today, Vanita. As we hopefully are moving towards the end of COVID, what in your pipeline do you have that's going to pick up the slack from, uh, from, your, from the demand for your COVID drugs? So um, for Lupin, we've had some um, upside from COVID drugs, but uh, we do not have too many uh, COVID drugs, uh, especially in the last couple of quarters. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, we had anti-infectives as well as um, um, uh, inhalation products that helped through COVID. But I'd say in the last couple of quarters, um, COVID drugs have not been a major contributor to our revenues. I mean, from our perspective, um, you know, what uh, we have in the pipeline that um, give us a confidence of growing our business over the coming quarters and years is um, a number of our complex generic products that we've been working on to be able to grow our um, generics business, in particular in the US. Uh, we have uh, an exclusive first of our launch in the second quarter of the fiscal year. We have our first uh, potential dry powder inhaler launch, um, uh, Spiriva, uh, at the end of next fiscal year. And we have a potential launch of our first biosimilar in the US, um, uh, Pectal Grastem, hopefully um, uh, once our site gets FDA inspected, now that the inspections uh, have started again, uh, hopefully later, uh, in fiscal year 23. So those are our material products that uh, will drive growth in the US um, in the coming fiscal year. Other than um, the US, yeah. I mean, India is a major market for us, obviously, um, and have um, a very strong momentum there that we continue to uh, build upon in fiscal year 23, mm -hmm. as well as uh, growth across other countries. So which so which of these, Vanessa, are you banking on to be able to increase your shareholder value? Because your shares are down 46% over the past 12 months. Um, so um, across the board, you know, um, our U.S. generic business has gone through significant challenges over the last uh, year and a half. We have seen significant pricing pressure in the U.S., um, um, you know, in our simpler oral solid dosage forms um, um, that, and you know, the industry has faced a huge amount of challenge on um, the simpler dosage forms. Uh, and we have worked hard to transition our portfolio into um, complex genetics and that transition is happening. And we have had um, a greater percentage of complex products contributing to revenues and profitability in fiscal year um, uh, 22. We'll see more so in fiscal year 23 and beyond. So that certainly will help um, um, uh, shore up our profitability. Likewise, we have material um, um, spend um, expenditure uh, controls uh, and cost optimization efforts underway that we expect uh, to help uh, uh, shore up profitability um, in the fiscal year. So we expect uh, from Q2 um, fiscal year 23 onwards starting to see um, the improvement in uh, margins and uh, certainly leading to um, um, you know, better margin profile in, in, in uh, the second half of the fiscal year in Q3 and Q4. Uh, Vinita, what, what is your digitalization strategy going forward? Uh, so we have digitalization um, uh, across multiple different areas. Um, in India, for example, we have um, uh, we're in the process of launching a digital uh, business um, um, around uh, uh, cardiovascular health to be able to 
uh, bring digital tools um, to um, to patients and physicians, leverage our uh, uh, our presence in the cardiovascular field to be able to get better solutions to patients as well as physicians to manage uh, manage care. So one is really making um, you know uh, bringing a digital product to um, our customers, both physicians as well as uh, patients. And then um, um, in our operations and supply chain, uh, we have um, uh, brought in digital uh, platforms to be able to bring efficiencies in, um, um, in operations, to be able to bet, uh, have better controls from um, uh, a quality and GMP standpoint. Likewise, on the supply chain front, um, which has been a major challenge through COVID, uh, we have brought um, contemporary processes uh, in the last 12 months. Um, and on top of that, um, um, you know, um, um, implemented uh, in the process of implementing digital tools to be able to improve efficiencies yeah. on the supply chain front. So, so you're, you're seeing digital as, a, as a, an efficiency mechanism rather than something that drives product development or may, may prove a revenue line? Uh, actually both, like the first one I mentioned on the cardiovascular health is a product um, wow. that we're bringing into uh, the market to our customers, both patients as well as physicians. And so it's both on the product differentiation, customer uh, side as well as efficiency. All right, we'll have to leave it there, Vinita. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. Uh, Vinita My Gupta pleasure. from Lupin. Let's just take a, a final check-in on what's happening on the Asian...